All right, grand day, people. It's Shay Seeking, and we're back talking about um, Kali um, in her inner G, right? Because she was a G, right? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> again, and we're talking about how the spirit of Kali, um, how all of these deities, you know, when it comes to females, we'll notice that in the biblical text, they are perceived as whores, harlots, liars, serpents, all of these things, right? Okay. Um, and again, you have to wonder why. You have to wonder why at the end of the day. Again, this is going to be another episode of This Is Not Your Mama's Bible Study because we know that his story lied. And this is where we talk about a non-biased approach to certain things of antiquity and biblically, historically, and now. So, again, um, we're talking about Kali and we're talking about her energy and we're talking about some of the some of us in these days right now that are experiencing some of the trials and tribulations. We talk about the trials and tribulations of um, Moses and all of these other beings. And again, um, I'm starting to think that when we're looking at this whole thing about Moses um, and these other beings that, yes, there may have been a Moses that in sparked or or started some type of a movement. But I think that. Moses is, um, it, I'm even thinking of osmosis, <laughs> um, or like even cause we're talking about uh, water and then, you know, the currency or movement or frequent, you know, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. We're, this is what I just was thinking. Um, and I was just thinking that whole thing of a Moses is still would have been something like a particle, a God particle or something that would be generated or regenerated within a group of people at a certain time. So again, like I always say, in my opinion, and again, I'm never here to tell you what it is or what it ain't. I'm simply sharing what it looks like to me. That in, that was a form of energy that was flowing through the actual people that have been oppressed or guided by people that are over them in the firmament and that run the establishment. Do you understand what I'm saying? In this construct that we live in, in this so-called world. So um, <clears throat> Moses may have been someone just like some of us coming into certain communities that we've built online to share information, um, uh, past, present to wake and rise people at this point in time about, uh, oppression and inequalities and things like that, that are going on now. That is a sense, that's a flow, right? So again, Christ in the consciousness is going to be like a, a particle thing where different, you know, people are going to take that energy in and do what it is that they're called to do or their part when it comes to that particular, um, and we could even look at them as a, a form of a plague depending on who's looking at it. Right. So, um, when it comes to Moses, like I said, we can look at that happening several times why we may be getting confused and why the biblical text is written the way that it is. Just my opinion. Um, where uh, precept upon precept, things change, times change. Who's, um, when we're looking at the biblical text, we're usually at the beginning of that chapter, you can see who the thing, who someone, uh, who a particular God is speaking to at that time. It will say something like, this is the speech that was spoken to the children of this at this time when they were here. And this is what they were doing. It's very specific, right? So who do you apply that to? So we can't just, in my eyes, I don't like to hop from there to go somewhere else because at the beginning of that chapter or while reading that, if you pay attention to details, you'll see that they're talking about someone else a different day. It could be a different time. See, so I don't like to cross-reference that way. Um, you know, um, it's just my opinion. Uh, so, cause if you do that, in my opinion, you can make anything sound like anything. I like to read through chapters as they are. That's why I do it the way that I do it on this channel. Many people do it the other way. <laughs> Many will also be deceived. So, um, and I'm not saying that my way won't, I'm just saying you have to use your own discernment at any time, all the time. So again, we're going to talk about what we came here to talk about, and that's Kali. Because when we were reading yesterday, I noticed that it was talking about gnashing of teeth. So I wanted to go ahead and look at, wait, let's see if we can go back to it. Mm, let me see. No, we can't. Um, yeah, we can't. I can't. I don't see where it went. But okay, 
So the gnashing in, uh, of teeth that she was doing. Um, and it said that um, it may not have been, oh man, hold on, let's see. I think it might be back here. Okay, let's see. Uh-oh. Mm. I can't remember um, because I know we said something about it. Uh, I know I said something about it sounding as if what if she was really making a commotion about some kind of injustice or something. And that's why they made it sound like it was something so blood curdling um, in order to, you know, keep us from being in those same mentalities at this point in time. Because when mother gets to that point look at this even a cat so see you know it reminds me so much she reminds me so much of Sekhmet and who knows um how they did this um I think they you know there's there's so much that can be talked about when it comes to the correlations between these particular women and their energy okay Yeah, from human to divine and again you know and that's what it is it's, it's all about coming back to that divine level of consciousness um because, again, what is a human? I advise you to do the etymology on it. We're not going to do it today, but just do the etymology on human. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what's the real uh, difference. So uh, we can't find it here. But, you know, if you watch the other video, it's only like eight, nine minutes long or something. You'll see where I say it. So, you know, what I want to do is look at it in this sense. It's talking about gnashing. Again, we are not aware, you know, people can learn this and yes, you know, whatever, you know, people can do, but we don't have time for that. Most people that are reading the biblical text don't have an interpreter. They're not going to be able to interpret this. And doing all that is also spending a lot of time spinning your wheels when, again, we're dealing with this language here. So if we're really in the spirit or we're really dealing with this day and age, we should be able to take this that we deal with and dissect it, use et uh, etymology or a dictionary to see what this is really speaking of. Um, again, who has time to go doing this? If you do, whatever. But again, there's other people that know how to read this language. And again, I still feel like they may be getting things misconstrued. Um, again, because it's up to you to discern. <laughs> And in a non-biased fashion, this is why I don't call myself any type of religion. I read the word. That's what I do. And if something seems strange, I'm going to call it out. If something is just questioning, you know, am I supposed to not say anything and just think I know what it means? And then, no, I don't work like that. So it says, of teeth, okay, appears several times in the Old Testament, including three mentions in Psalms, okay? Um, it says, one in uh, Job. One in Lamentations, Lamentations says of the Babylonian occupiers of Jew Jerusalem. So again, baby, Lonian, you know, um, you know, what are we in? And then Leon or, you know, I was looking at something that had to do with Leon or it, it had me thinking of Sierra Leone and how a lot of people were taken from America to that particular part of Africa at one point in time, um, so-called after slavery. But again, who knows if it was before. Um, but again, some scholar is going to be able to tell you something. But again, I use discernment. And again, I use all the tools that I've been given so far. And that's just why I see it the way I do. So, um, and that's just for me, you know. Like I said, I'm just casting the seeds out. You don't have to watch it or like it or want to know it. Um, and it says, occupiers of Jerusalem, okay? They hiss, okay? And again, you know, baby, that's reminding me of like the beginning. Like even the first shall be the last. And, you know, just um, do we really know when we're talking about when we're talking about the old time Babylon as far as what we would perceive to be Babylon today? Was it a good thing for Babylon to fall back then? Was Babylon prior to? I'm just saying. So it says uh, here that uh, this may be talking about some ancients of your particular people prior to religion. Okay. All right. So again, they hiss. Okay. 
um, can also mean weep, okay, and gnash their teeth, okay. And again, you know, um, I'm pretty sure you guys, you know, like even when I read this on the surface, I get, you know, how sometimes you can get real irritated or upset and sometimes you clutch your teeth down and, you know, you try not to really show it, but, you know, your jaw's all tight <laughs> because you're just taking something in that just don't sound right, don't seem right. It just can't be right. And you just like, you know, mm hmm. OK, yeah, I, you you saying what you're saying, but really, OK, I'm going to see it how I'm going to see it. So. It says in all OT cases or Old Testament, except except Psalms uh, 112 and 10, the gnashing appears to be an act of persecution and not suffering. So again, if she's gnashing her teeth at someone or something, could this mean that she is making a cry? She is speaking in a certain language or she is doing a certain act of persecuting someone that may have wronged her. See, because they try to act like that these people just did this stuff for no reason, especially when it comes to women. You know, I, I'm telling you, I'm still a little upset about the war on the womb video that I did a couple weeks back. That was the first strike. Anything that I had on my channel and it was a actual real strike and they took the sh they took it down right away. Right away. There was nothing in there why they should have done that. But we need to be aware. We need to be aware. Okay? Because if you really just take some time and look, there's a plan. There's something going on when it comes to the womb. When it comes to the woman. You know, um, and maybe we didn't see it this way because so many people are used to seeing women as whores and harlots and things like that because of biblical texts. Because of other texts. You know, and then now we see a world where this type of stuff is going on and we want to be focused on what is happening and dresses being worn and all this stuff when we're not going back to the root. You have to go back to the beginning, back to the basis. And everybody is on this whole new campaign. And I'm careful because of this 5G and all this other stuff. Right. So everybody wants to now say, oh, don't read. You know, we, we need. To, yes, we can go there. But, you know, sometimes when someone when there is a large movement to move from something into something else. See, we, we're tapping into this new intelligence to also examine things that we thought we knew, because, again, we think we know, but we have no idea. So if we just take this new thing and take it into what they have that's new, that's coming, you have let go of any. Uh, anything that goes back to the beginning. I like to go back to the beginning of things. Like, I, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense. You know, now all the books can be burned. You know, um, you know, all of the uh, stuff that's online can be altered. And it just, yeah, it's just a perfect timing for this right here. Okay. It's, it's perfect timing, you know. And so I look at the behaviors and things of, 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 of just, how things in media or how things are being pushed to the masses in general. Okay. So again, this, this is some persecuting. It's probably persecution. Okay. And not suffering. So someone would be looking at this as making, making her look weak as if she was suffering or to warn certain people with this energy, not to go where they're going to be going, you know, and at the same time, she was probably persecuting those that were coming against her. But they'll make it seem like something else to f make you fear going in this direction. It's just my opinion. We just freestyling here. The phrase, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, appears seven times in the New Testament and inscribed on, uh, on the fate of the unrighteous ones at the conclusion of the age. Okay? So again, is this her persecuting those who came against her in a sense? Right. Or is this somebody else persecuting her for going against their wrongs? And because they had more power and strength and they had more of a following, they were able to do this particular thing to her. Or people that had that energy or that spirit, even like a witch hunt or something of that nature. And again, we have to start thinking about how we got and how we're still here and what the hell is going on right now. There, there cannot be a female, a real uh, female presence um, in any of this stuff for us to be still in these positions that we're in today. Okay. So 
I'm, 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 and I am, you know, because I'm practicing a little bit of discipline here. Okay. So I am trying to give it to you as best I can, but I have a mouthful that again, I will continue on this series. <laughs> um, and once, once I go into these scriptures here, then we will, uh, go a little bit further. I mean, not too deep because I'm not trying to be not here to share the information with you, but hopefully you can discern. Okay. So it says, um, it is, uh, thought to derive from, uh, the load logian and the hypothetical Q source, which yielded Matthew eight and 12 Luke 13 and 28. Uh, the other five occurrences, Matthew 13 and 42, Matthew 13 and 50, Matthew 22 and 13, Matthew 24 and 51, Matthew 25 and 30 are all within the context of parables and are widely held to be uh, redactional uh, additions by Matthew. Um, you know, hold on. Others, however, believe redactional uh, theories. Again, and that's what we're doing. We're taking a theoretic approach. We may not have all the proof. All the proof may just be in you. We're just going on a theoretic journey here. Okay. Of the parables are uh, speculative. And again, parables are just a way of speaking so that some people will understand and other people won't. So the reason, the, the fact that we are speaking in parables in the biblical text should be questionable on its own. Okay. And again, a part of me knows that there are certain entities that are watching. They want me to go in a di certain direction <laughs> so that I can be in, in a, in a, uh, a way taking the bait, right? But it almost feels like somebody has to say something because it feels like we're already dealing with you know, so hopefully the last couple of people that may be able to understand this stuff can hold on. Because, and again, it will be a real awakening soon. There will be a real awakening soon if we don't take heed to the things that are going on here on the spiritual realm and how it has everything to do with what's going on in this worldly realm right now. And offer little explanation as to the meaning um, of this uh, phrase. Because he, you know, if we're going to be talking about why the, the uh, uh, emasculation of men, you know, and all this other stuff, we're going to have to talk about this book. A lot of things in this book have to do with why it is the way it is. And the fact that even when we're talking about the words of Jesus, Lots of things are questionable in those texts as far as showing so much love towards, and I'm not saying anything sexual, I'm just saying what I'm saying. And there's so much uh, love, you know, um, e either these uh, disciples were not he's but she's, or there's so a lot of love going on between these disciples and Jesus that we're wondering if women, why women can't get the same amount of love throughout the text as these men in the text were giving to each other. So you have to then look at the structure of things. It's just it. Because even when we're talking about instances as if the oil, right? It's not my opinion. It's, I've already done a video on this a while back, okay? <clears throat> when we, I will tell you to look up Nard. When we're talking about nard, so again, to make it like everybody, you know, sinners, all this and that, but, you know, uh, Jesus was perfect and all this other stuff, you know, I have to question things. I like details. I look at details. If you look at nard, nard is being described as an aphrodisiac. Okay. So. You know, we have this being rubbed on places, right? So this is all I'm saying, you see, because they can put it right in front of your face when it comes to certain of these things. But when it's, um, comes to women, they, they try to take it all the way to something horrible, whorish or something of that nature. And so you have to just question things like this. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you look at an image, and we'll just go there because we're just going to do it today. If you look at an image, okay, and this is not to say anything about the character of. What I'm trying to show you is that somebody wrote this text. They tell us who it was. They try to say this, this, and that. But at the end of the day, nobody was there. You, we weren't there. Okay? And so, and we don't know who took what out and who would put what in and who manipulated. Yeah, people are going to say, oh, well, it's, you know, you can't change God's word. Bull. It's been done. The books have been taken out, whole books, entire books, 60 something books, 66 something. Come on, y'all. Like you just, and, and not just, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I just see things the way that they are, right? So again, we haven't done this type of Bible study in a while, but again, we're here, right? Things change, okay? Um, certain things, you know, energies are sent in to spark things, you know? And so here we go. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, if you look at the image, if you look at an image or a foul image, okay. Um, of a, uh, phallus. Okay. <clears throat> I want to, I want to point out the fact if you look at this image, because again, we're all supposed to look at ourselves as if we are horrible sinners and all this stuff. And then we wonder again, going back to the beginning, back to basics, why society is the way it is right now. And why it's looked at as being, um, let's see, why being confident, you know, is, is looked at as a sin. All the, some of these things that, you know, it's just supposed to be natural to people to be in their greatness. But somewhere along the lines, we've been convinced, we've been manipulated to think that this is something wrong and haughty. Okay, to question things, you know, is inappropriate. But, you, but meantime, some of us can see and we're seeing that whatever it is may be inappropriate. And that's OK. We need to internalize that. <laughs> it may have been something. But is it inappropriate or is it something that was naturally occurring? <clears throat> OK. All right. So we, we look at this whole act of even um, when we're talking about sex, you know, um, as if it is something horrible. Um, when we were created, knowing good and well that we were going to do this, knowing good and well that it would be pleasurable, knowing good and well that, yes, it was to produce. But I'm pretty sure. And I think that, again, there's other ways now and there were other ways then to. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, man, when they go and get the treatments to end up uh, if you can't have a baby, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's not coming right to my mind right now in vitro. OK, so again, they had it then I feel very long time ago and we could go back even to the 1800s and start seeing it being documented. OK, which I think some of the things were filled into the text at that point in time um, as well, especially New Testament. Um, and where I was going with that is. So before they started to create these people, you know, somebody, you know, you could look at the story of Yakub or you can look at all these stories um, and see that somebody was trying to figure out how to get this particular thing uh, to create. OK, or form people. OK, so um, if you look at so-called aliens and, you know, abductions and stuff and how usually they're prodding and poking, you know, people when they do, you know, who knows what's really going on is all I'm saying. So. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll go back to talking about how if you look at an image, an inappropriate image or of a phallus and where do you see the feet? So when this expensive oil, <laughs> this nard that is an aphrodisiac that has been used in uh, sexual acts for centuries being used again, this may not be what we were supposed. Oh, it may not be what happened but subconsciously you're reading that seeing that but overlooking that because you have a religious approach or belief a false perception or notion when re all reality a lot of these storylines that we're taking in are not talking about what you think it's talking about you've just been educated which is removing any common sense and placing something i just said this is a simple way okay and then 
training or indoctrinating the mind with something else. So subconsciously, you're probably reading it that way. But in, you know, with these two eyes, you think that you're just talking about some oil. And then we wonder how, how the world is so perverse now or perver, perver <laughs> we won't go there. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay. So anyways, that was going off the subject, but I wanted to bring that up because that's a detail and it's something that you can do your own research on and then you can come back and show, show me and share me what you came up with. If you really take it seriously and go and do the research and see what this nard is, use some of the keywords that you think will show you, not just what's on the surface, but going deeper. And, and then you come back and tell me. Okay. And not all of the apostles or all the people around, it happened to be, who was it, Mary? Okay. So. And I won't even look at it as some form of uh, witchcraft or, you know, um, some form of a... Um, I think that they said that the okay if if I think it goes back to ancient India um and orgies and things like that as when they used to I mean if you read about it you'll see but um again there's a difference in what somebody wants you to perceive and what something actually is really saying mm -hmm. you know um it just is so let's keep on going here and again there's a difference between what actually really happened as well but so that we can look through the layers here and see what we're talking about this is the reason why i'm bringing it up just like the gnashing of the teeth you probably just imagine somebody sitting there where's the image where's the image i'll just show you an image because i'll show you the image that i think first came up when i came here to look Let's see. Let's see. I mean, it's more probably looked like this because you see how big her eyes is. <laughs> Look like she pissed, right? It probably more like that. But let's go back. Right here. You know, it it probably looks more like this, right? <laughs> right, and it's making her look like the most demonic thing ever, or this na this thing that's gnashing, and she's she's. You know, there's demons or devils, there's heads of men, there's, you know, you see this? There's all kind of people in here. So again, this is, it, it, even looking at this image here, it's, it's re reminding me of a woman scorned. You know, she may even be letting these demons or these black uh, colored, uh, you know, um, this legion of demons out, which again, if you research the word demon, what are we really talking about here? Just saying, do some real break, breaking down of it and tell me if it um, really means what you think it means. Again, I used to do etymology on here a lot, but I know a lot of people maybe don't want to sit through that. And so we're just not going to do it. Um, so anyhow, you see here that these people look like they're being attacked by these um, demons. Um, that maybe have been unleashed in a sense from her, um, you know, and, and you have to wonder what happened. Were these people, the people that were actually after her? And so to defend herself, she had to react in a certain manner. You know, I just wonder, I'm just looking at this, just, I'm just really just looking at this. <sighs> Because although she, this image looks like a, a dragon, you know, uh, you know, these look like little baby dragons. Um, yeah, you know. So, okay. So let's keep going here. Um, gnashing. Okay, speculative. Wait a minute. Mm. The phrase gnash the teeth is found in Acts 7 and 54 in the story of the stoning of the stoning, apologies, of Stephen. 
um, the phrase was an expression of anger of the Sanhedrin towards Stephen before the stoning. Uh, the the phrase is also found in the idiom the idiomic expression. Gnashing of teeth means grinding one's teeth together, having one's teeth set on edge, or biting down in pain, anguish, or anger. So again, and who knows if this person was even in pain, anguish, or anger? <laughs> you see? Who, who knows if she wasn't just being in a defensive lioness mode to protect her people? Who, who knows? You know, because even it says about when it talks about Christ that he was sent to correct things, to, to shake things up with these... What does it say? The testimony of the worldly wise, the conflict. Okay. Okay. The rule of equity. Okay. These things had to do with the battle of Armageddon. Okay. And again, ISIS, Jesus, again, again. Okay. So again, some something is there's judgment going on all up and through these days, right? But are we going to sit here and be the ones being judged by those that are supposed to be being judged as they try to wipe you out of here, or are you going to find that energy and stand and stand for something? Especially we have we're at a time when people have been taught or okay with watching pain the pain and anguish of women especially women of color and the misrepresentation of or thereof so that's part one part two we're going to go into the actual scriptures i was able to find 13 scriptures that have something to do with gnashing of teeth and we're just going to go ahead and go through them don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you choose, share if you like, and I will see you guys soon.